here we are in the uh, in the actual Moat Museum. Lovely Ford Anglia. You won't see him in that condition anymore. I mean, Harry Potter never kept his like that. And over here, not that I'm addicted to Fords or anything at all. It's gorgeous Zodiac. Mark 1 Ford Capri. Another Ford Granada and the RS200. Another Ford Sierra Cosworth or Sapphire Cosworth. And then the far end was either the Ford Focus, the Fiesta XR2, and the Ford Escort Rally Car. There's a lot of cars just everywhere you go. Rolls Royce, Jaguar type, proper Mini, Hillman GT, and going to an original Vauxhall OE type. And of course, the 1925 MG, known as old number one, will have this beautiful construction. Not to mention this old 1896 Wolseley. Absolutely wonderful. This original garage scene. John Carter's garage from Pembrokeshire. You know, obviously, this is the way it would have looked back in the days when you, these cars were seen on the road. A lot of you will remember garages like this. Sadly, you can't smell the way it smells when you stood next to it. Oil drainer and dispenser there. What a wonderful place this is. bit lost as to uh, where to go first unfortunately. Let's have a general look around. Of course we've got the cars that are made to look as though the matchbox cars in the boxes or on the boxes. Everything in here is just so amazing. Now I have, <clears throat> now I have been told that this lovely vehicle is one of one. And at one point, one point rather, the museum did turn down an offer of 30 million to have it taken off the hands. What a fantastic car. Apparently, it's as loud as hell when it fires up. But there truly is some wonderful prototypes on uh, gas turbine cars. So this is the... 1956 Rover T3, which obviously is a gas turbine coupe. And then next to it, the 1955 T3. This was the gas turbine base unit. You have to wonder, don't you, would gas turbine work these days? Do you think it would? Leave us a comment below, let us know if you think it would work these days. You know, probably the most popular car you'll all remember. There's a venerable old Mark V Cortina. Obviously a gear with those wheels on it. Who doesn't have a soft spot for a real Cortina? Simta over there. And obviously everybody remembers the old wedge. The uh, Wolseley this one is. So it's not the Austin Princess. This is the Wolseley. Himmel Imp in the background. Royal Mail three-wheeler. Another Ford Anglia. And then quick parts 
look at all these trophies. Now, I'm not going to read through the list of what they're all for because the museum actually is closing in about an hour and I need to get as much filming in as I can, but look at the trophies. So nice to see everything like this as well. It's the old Austin, is it 1100, 1300? 1100, so the Austin 1100. Still popular cars to have. This beautiful Elvis. Absolutely gorgeous. So this is be the uh, the Elvis TE21. Such a long body. And then over here is the, uh, that will be a 1964 Vauxhall Viva HA Deluxe. I think you used to see a lot of these on the road when I, when I was at school, there was a lot of these on the road. And the MG Magnet, or Magnet, as some people pronounce it. So the A40, is that A40 or A35? That's the A40. And the Nash Metropolitan. Now, if you've watched any of my previous videos on places I've been to like Beamish, you may see in the background there's normally a blue over white Nash Met uh, Metropolitan there. Delightful Triumph Mayflower. Possibly one of the most angular cars that you'll ever see. Such a flat side. Now, I know I'm going to get shot down in flames for this. All the comments, I'll really get shot down in flames for this. But this 49 Ford Anglia, do you not agree it would look better with a blower through the bonnet? Massive wheels on the back of it, going down the drag strip at Santa Pod. Be, safe, be fair, be honest, it would, wouldn't it? It would look so much better like that. Glorious Morris Minor. And then for novelty, follow, uh, for novelty value, you could have a Lego Mini. Or the Mini Cooper, the way it would be if Lego built it. Complete with Union Jack on the roof. Some Land Rover with tracks. You won't see many of them. You know, I'd love to know what they're like to drive with those tracks on. I mean, I suppose in theory, it shouldn't be that much different. You're never quite sure, are you? And there's the uh, British Transmarters Expedition Range Rover. That is actually on that angle, all the way up there. There's so much history in this place. Forward control over there, just in the background with trailer. Now, now obviously, I'm not 100% up on everything that's in here. I'm probably, probably not a lot that's in here, but that McLaren, what a lovely colour. The next McLaren is that. Aston Martin. The Vanquish. <clears throat> now these, you don't see one of these very often. You may be used to seeing in certain places a Jensen Interceptor. But this one, this particular one's the Jensen Interceptor FF. Now this is a Series 2, but it's the four-wheel drive one. The FF stands for, stands for Ferguson four-wheel drive. Truly a valuable item. There's a Lotus Europa. There's a Lightning GT. An electric sports car. And possibly the only MGB in the world, MGB GT in the world, you can actually walk through. Look at this. Even the engine has been cut in half. We're not going to go too far in, but... If you have a car with a four-cylinder engine, that's pretty much what the inside of your engine is going to look like, or would, if you took a saw to it and sliced down the middle. And indeed, the rest of the car, you can see how everything works. That'll be a heater matrix. Obviously, behind the dashboard, you can just see the chrome steel on column, flywheel and gearbox clutch, and the prop shafts. The different pinion in the back. 
Oh, it's so easy to work on a car if you could do this to one and just get everything like that. And of course, everybody will recognise this particular Aston Martin. So if you're watching this video and you're thinking, well, where is this? Where can I find all these? I'm actually today at the British Motor Museum in Gaydon in Warwickshire. Fantastic place to come in. Oh. Absolutely amazing place to come to. So there's this floor that we're in now wandering around. There's also an upstairs. And as well as the upstairs, there's another building, the Jaguar Heritage Centre building, which is just as intriguing and just as interesting. Some of the stuff parked up in here. You're not going to see it anywhere else. I'm sure I understand when uh, talking to some of the staff earlier, all of the vehicles in here, every single one that's capable of moving, does move and is used fairly often, fairly regularly. They're also hired out to film companies, TV production companies, if there's a specific car they want, or if they want some kind of street furniture in the background of a movie. You've got to get down here if you haven't been yet. So I'm just having a sort of a leisurely walk around. And I said, it's not too long before the museum closes. We can have a leisurely walk around and taking some of the sights. The old street bus. I love this caravan. Wow. I bet this weighs an absolute immense amount. One thing's for certain, you wouldn't tow this with a little car. You need something quite substantial to tow that with. And if you watched the Sylvester Stallone version of Judge Dredd, you might recognise that city cab, which of course was a Land Rover product at the time, hence the badge. I don't know if you'd be able to say anything in there at all. I can imagine that windscreen being uh, particularly difficult to see out of in any kind of normal weather conditions. Of course, from the uh, glory days of motoring. Back then, when uh, only the elite could have cars, something that we're quickly heading back to. Stand up for yourself, fight, buy a car, buy all the cars. TR7. Now, this looks particularly interesting. This is the SoCal Speed Shop. I'm thinking this would be the Bonneville slot, uh, Salt Flats racer. Let's have a look at the info card and see what it says. Ah, this is the 2003 MGZTT speed record car. If you want to pause the video and have a read of that. And just behind this lovely 1886 Benz, something you may all recognise, it's Del Boy's Capri Gear. I mean, you can just see yourself, can't you? Driving down Peckham High Street in your camel coat, jewellery in the boot to sell. In your tiger skin interior. Can't beat a Capri gear. All you rally enthusiasts may recognise this as Paddy Hopkirk's car, the one that he won the Monte Carlo rally in. What a gorgeous thing. Nice to see. And surprising it survived, especially the way Paddy Hopkirk would drive it. 
and of course you can't exactly have Del Boy's Capri gear without having the venerable old three-wheeler van Trotters independent traders do you think I'll get away if I say tits get away with it and then next to it Lady Penelope's Fab One now of course this one isn't actually a Rolls Royce or a Bentley this one's based on the 2004 Thunderbird from Ford it's actually the limousine movie car from the movie Thunderbird I mean you can't exactly miss it from here it's almost as long as an Ector one I'm at least 8 to 10 12 foot away from it to get it into the screen I can imagine that being uh, the right awkward thing to drive around in of course it wouldn't make any difference to Parker because Parker being the ultimate professional look at the dash in it though central seat for the driver one seat in the back for Lady P beast of a car painted if it's going to stand out you can just see pink metallic paint on it twin central exhaust at the back what a behemoth of a car just found this wonderful Morris Minor fire brigade fire engine is it a fire engine is it a fire appliance oh it's actually listed as a fire engine classic bell mounted on the front overrider Austin pedal cars or the J40s I remember seeing a lot of these as a child and you just don't get them anymore and this is Louis the Lion created by the Land Rover design team based here in Gaydon in Warwickshire done as part of a UK based public arts wildlife sculpture event Louis was inspired by the first Land Rover registration of which was HUE 166 known as Huey I really hope you've enjoyed all the video done here at Mustaville thanks for watching don't forget to like and subscribe we'll see you in the next one bye for now